Well, 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 what do we have here? If it isn't my favorite addictologist working on a synthetic alternative to alcohol. But wait, what? Let's start from the beginning. Alcohol is deeply ingrained in our society. It helps us socialize with ease and is a part of many events. But it's no secret that alcohol isn't exactly healthy for you. Not so long ago, people actually thought that drinking in moderation could have some benefits, but current guidelines are clear. No dosage of alcohol is safe. It can ruin your body and your mind, destroy your sleep and your dignity, and it will leave you begging for more. During the pandemic, there were almost 9,000 deaths caused by alcohol in the UK. And that's not negligible. And while alcohol is not the best drug ever, and it even scored as the most harmful drug in a study done in 2010, and I've made a whole video about this study if you're interested in watching this, it's still considered legal in our Western world. Legal unlike other substances that might not be so harmful. And as we've tried again and again, prohibition is not a good solution to our problems with substances, but maybe like having a better, safer alternative could help. Now, non-alcoholic drinks that mimic the taste of some alcohols flooded the market, such as like alcohol-free gin tonic, non-alcoholic beers, non-alcoholic sect and wine, and even some plain old good non-alcoholic sodas popularity is on the rise. But of course, these are good if you want to stay sober. But sometimes you might actually enjoy a little boost. Now, David Nutt and his team and his lab named GABA Labs believe that people would choose the healthier alternative to alcohol if given a chance. And they decided that they would introduce such alternative. But what does the process of designing a new substance look like? Well, you need to know where the original molecule hits the brain, what buttons it pushes, and then you need to understand what makes the drug dangerous and what makes it good. Then you are left with like a bunch of theory and lab testing and computer simulations. And in case of alcohol, you're looking for a molecule that would be able to interact with your GABA receptors and uh, levels because that is the neurotransmitter that is affected by alcohol and causes the good things. GABA can help you feel relaxed and more willing to participate in social things. And the new drug should be able to target these receptors in the brain and consequently have effects on like your dopamine and serotonin levels without affecting other stuff such as glutamate. And glutamate plays a role in some of the negative effects of alcohol. So that's one part of developing a new drug. And the other part is much harder and incredibly much more expensive than the research part. Because you need to pass an approval process. And I read that the authors want to bring the drug to the stores in like five years. And it needs to pass food regulations. And although like passing food regulations usually takes less than five years, this molecule has some unique properties and might require more testing. Now the planned drug should be named Alcarel. What are the desired results? Well, it should help you feel the benefits you feel when you drink alcohol, such as like the social lubrication and the relaxation, but without any of the horrible side effects such as headaches and memory impairment, aggression or even like long-term damage to your organs. There should also be a limit on how it affects you so you don't get shit-faced, just tipsy. Now the process of designing a drug that would be ingested and not processed in your liver is something that I do not understand and removing the bad and leaving the good is also something out of my like area of expertise. Plus, of course, like this research is covered in trade secrets and like private funding. The people involved in this project claim that they have tested the drug on themselves, but at the moment it's not available to test publicly because of like public health concerns. Are there any risks? Well, of course there are risks and people are skeptical. Sarah Zimor from Alcohol Research Group in California has doubts on whether alcohol can actually work. 
Some people think that it's impossible to like separate the good from the bad and remember the good old rule. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But then again, don't forget that people are synthesizing new molecules all the time and even if alcohol is half as harmful as alcohol, it would still be a win. Plus, as David himself said, it's about offering people an alternative. It doesn't have to replace all your drinks. And is there any way we could actually check whether David's lab has any credibility? Well, they managed to bring one product to the stores. GABA labs offer a botanical product, alcohol-free spirit, they call it. It's named Sentia. And it promises to give you a two-drink feeling without giving you the negative effects of alcohol. And how is that possible? Alcohol was not approved yet, right? Well, that's right, but Sentia does not contain alcohol. Inside is just some plant extracts that are capable of interacting with your GABA system in the brain. It is quite expensive, but I'm considering like ordering it and trying it for a video. From what I've read, two drink feeling might be a bit of an overstatement, but a drink is capable of producing some relaxation, according to some people on the internet. So I'm interested. But that's it for today's video, so what do you think? Are you excited about the prospect of having a new molecule that would potentially be less harmful or are you adamant that the good old alcohol is the best thing ever? Or are you just content with being sober and don't need anything else? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching, see you next time!